Hey everyone, Matt Denham back here again with yet another release of Cognos Analytics. This time, Cognos Analytics 11.1.7, or release 7, or R7. Super excited about this release because it's going to be the long-term supported release of Cognos Analytics. We jammed a lot of great stuff into this release. So let's get started. The first thing that I wanted to showcase is some changes we made to the combination chart, also called the line and column chart. So I'm going to add that to the canvas. Now, if you remember in a previous version, we added this field mapping panel in release six, I believe, so that you could just drag and drop content there. Now what you're hopefully seeing here is we've actually added some hotspots to the visualizations themselves so that you can start populating it just by dragging and dropping it directly onto the visualization. If I start doing this with some data here, Again, I'm just going to drag and drop some content on just to get this filled out. A couple of things uh, are going to happen. One, hopefully what you're seeing here is, see that we've added the smart titling. Based on the column title, of course, we're going to populate it based on the fields that you've added. A couple of things all in one, the smart titles, the drop zones. And now the, the combination chart itself, we've got a couple of different use cases. I can now give a series to the uh, lines themselves. And I'm gonna do that by just typing into the field mapping panel, as you can see there. We're getting these, this kind of multi-line view. Now, if I don't wanna do that, and I wanted it to compare uh, sort of a multi-measure scenario, I could add planned revenue to my line position. And that would allow me to compare, uh, you know, an actual versus a target or something like that. A couple of really new and exciting features that we've added to the combination chart. I'm just going to quickly change the colors up a little bit. We've also added a, a bunch of new properties to a number of visualizations. I'm going to demonstrate some of them here using this combination chart, but a lot of them exist throughout all of the different visualizations. One example, specifically around the combination chart for this example, is now I can actually stack these. And in previous versions of the combination chart, I could not do that. But I can also toggle on logarithmic scaling for either the line or the column or both. So that's what I've done here uh, is toggled those both on. I'm just going to turn those back off. Now we've also added under the axis section the ability to specify a custom axis range. So if I wanted to just kind of key in on the, maybe the 10 to 20,000 area view here, I can just type that in. I'm gonna set the minimum as 10,000, maximum as 20, and that allows me to really jump into this particular slice of the data. Certainly one of the more heavily requested features. There's a lot going on in the combination chart now, that makes it extremely powerful and worth looking at if you haven't played with it before. I'm just gonna turn off the legend. Now, the next thing that I wanted to show is some new support for custom visualizations that we've added in this release. If you recall a couple of releases ago, I believe it was R5, we started supporting Generally speaking, custom visualization. So if somebody's off through something in D3 or high charts or something else, uh, you'd be able to bring that directly into the dashboard. Now we've done the same with schematics, what we call schematics, sort of based on SVGs. You can kind of imagine having an image and being able to kind of specify layers to that image. There's a number of uh, sites that offer or tools that offer this ability be able to add sort of like annotations to a static image. And so that's what I've done here. Uh, we've got just a basic map. This is just an SVG that we've, you know, added a layer to, to be able to call out specific things. Uh, and so that's one thing that I can use now in dashboard. This is something that had been available in reporting since the support of custom visualizations. And we've just now added that to the dashboard as well. A lot of different properties with that. I could go down to the, the regions layer that I've populated and again, pick different palettes if I wanted to do that. A 
Now, if you remember, we've been augmenting the crosstab visualization for the last number of releases. This is one that is very near and dear to my heart. We continue to invest in the crosstab to make it extremely powerful. So I'm going to show where that investment went in this release. Again, I'm just going to populate this with some data. Okay, I'm going to pick revenue as my values and let's put coupon response as my rows. And then we'll throw out some years. Now we've really, with this release, enhanced the conditional formatting capability of the crosstab. So I'll show you how you're going to look to fill that out with this crosstab. Here, under conditional color, I'm going to pick revenue. That's the value that I would like to color. But if I go back and add a second measure, let's take quantity. By default, you're going to see revenue and quantity sold as two individual columns in this crosstab. So if I go back to my properties, now I see both revenue and quantity sold as options to color. So again, let's go into revenue. And here I have a couple of options. So I could color revenue, which is shown up here. I can choose to color that by another field. If I wanted to color it by planned revenue based on a percentage of attainment, that's one option that I have. So maybe anything above 100% of plan is green, etc. But just for purpose of simplicity, I'm going to take a numeric threshold against revenue itself. So I can add a rule. We're going to say anything greater than would be a good number here, 10 million, I guess. Anything greater than 10 million. We want that to be green, but I can specify any color that I want, a custom color. And then based on the KPI visualization that we added a couple of releases ago, we have those same indicators that you can choose from to show the type of callout that you would want. And I've got a minimized view of that as well. So let me just add another rule that shows if it's less than, would be another good number for that, 1 million, I guess. Less than 1 million, I want it to be red. And I want my indicator to be maybe the X or something else. All that I've done here is specified the color that I want. Now I could invert this as well. If I wanted the text to be white and the fill to be green, that was an option that I hope you saw in there as well. And all of this is specific to revenue. I could do the same with quantity sold. Again, as a percentage, if I wanted to do that, maybe against a calculation or target sales figure. Or again, I could just add my own less than be red and X. This you can really use to pinpoint problems and, and areas that you want to focus on. It's, I think, a lot more powerful than we had in previous versions. And it's really, again, something that a lot of people have been asking for dearly. While I'm here, I'm going to show another feature that we've added for dashboard authors. You must be in edit mode as an author of the dashboard in order to make use of this. But here under the visualization data, we could always show disaggregated data. Now I can actually export this. And all this is going to do is just an immediate dump. You can see it's going to drop. I've done this a couple of times uh, as a CSV into my downloads folder. It's that straightforward. I can choose to export the summary or the detailed data from my visualization. This one, I want to turn off the, the titling perhaps. I got smart title, custom title, no title. The next thing that I'm going to show is, again, I mentioned that we added some properties to a couple of different visualizations. I'll throw a pie on. Pi doesn't really get a lot of love. So let's populate this. Here I'm going to use the province or state as my segments. And I'll grab a measure for that. Switch to a custom palette. 
let's choose to contrast the label color. Let's show the percentage. Let's put it outside and let's make it a donut. I'm also going to turn off the legend. Now what we've added to this release in, you would be able to show either the value as I've done here as a percentage or the item itself, like what represents this slice or segment, so California. But now we can just do both uh, and you get them kind of piped out. Certainly very, very powerful to see that uh, side by side. That leads me to the next feature that we've added, which is an ability to specify, let's call them model filters. If I wanted to go off the table itself, I can now create a new filter, which becomes reusable. So I'm going to call this country filter. And I'm going to drag country on, and let's say country equals Germany. So I'm going to drag and drop that member on. It might make sense because I'm filtering on a very specific country. Maybe I call this Germany filter or something else. I can drag and drop this filter either into the filter shelf or I can drop it directly onto the visualization itself. And you see that it updates to only show those province or states of Germany. One other thing that's worth showing, and, and this is uh, something that we don't demonstrate very often. A handful of releases ago, we added a what we call a serviceability panel. This is based on some feedback that a lot of what's going on in the dashboard might be a little bit of a black box and trying to understand some of goings on under the covers, sort of like what you would have in reporting if you used reporting. You invoke the serviceability panel by pressing control period or control dot, and that brings this panel out from the side. And so in a previous version, like I said, you can get some information about the data source, about performance query time versus render time, all of these things are, are very powerful in, in sort of understanding what's going on. But now in the latest release, we've added this ability to show the query. This is again, something that was highly sought after. But I can actually show the, the Cognos SQL versus the native SQL and compare them and at least then understand a little bit about what's going on under the covers within my dashboard. One other property that I wanted to show off, uh, I'm just going to create a new tab for that, is some range coloring for the bullet chart. If I drop the bullet on, it's a little bit bigger. Here again, there's quite a bit to populate in the bullet, so I'm just going to do revenue bar, planned revenue as the target. Maybe I'll start doing some type-ins here. Minimum is, I made a calculation that is somewhat intuitive for me to figure out. Mid, mid, and max. So you can see that these thresholds get populated based on the calculation that I've defined for these different ranges. You know what, I'm going to repeat these for product line. Now what we can do is actually color those different thresholds. I'm just going to change my palette again. I've always been able to choose the bar and the target, but now maybe I want to specify in my mid, so we'll make that the red range, of course, this yellow. Now with the ability to color those, I think it goes a long way, you know, making it very clear and understandable for any consumers exactly how you might be doing for any of your different values. Let's pretend that this is a very beautiful dashboard. I didn't spend a lot of time. It took me a couple of minutes to throw this together, but I have added custom color palettes to each one of these things. This is something that I might want to save and make available for dashboard authors 
um, to make use of. New feature to R7, I can save as a template. I'm just gonna add this to my templates folder. Now that it gets added to a specific location, it means that it's a first class citizen really of the environment. I can assign permissions to that template to control access. And what it's doing is it's just extracting the data from the actual dashboard itself. All of the content still lives kind of in its empty state here. What that means is if I were to look to create a new dashboard, we have this custom section here now. If I go in, I've got some templates that I've created in the past. Maybe I have a corporate template or theme that I want to start with. It's again, trying to get that dashboard author to a great starting point as fast as possible. So I can select any data source here. Just quickly do that. And then as I populate the visualizations, of course, it's kept all of my preferences and colors and, and sizing and everything like that. So it doesn't matter really what I populate in here. As this renders, it's going to keep the same color palette that I assigned based on the template. If you're looking to build out kind of a corporate standard corporate theme, uh, and maybe you have a shape up here and you've got a, a logo or you've embedded a URL widget or something like that, all of that is going to stay in your template. It's just the data that's extracted. So it's a great starting point uh, to get people rolling. That is a high level overview of, of everything that's added to Cognos Analytics dashboards version seven. As I said, it's the long-term supported release. So from here on in, it's going to be fixed packs and anything included for the next couple of years. Very excited about this release. Lots of great stuff in there. This is just the dashboard component. There's a set of other components going to Cognos as well. Please leave any feedback that you have. Don't hesitate to leave something in the comments. I'm always checking those and I, I try to be as quick as I can in responding to them. Happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you very much. See you at the next release.